to you please hey there this is to bringing another kerbal space program video this is a fun build that i did once i had uh, mastered i say mastered once i had actually gotten more than a uh, one ssto into orbit i decided to start having some fun with them and this is a i guess an impro slightly improved version of my first ssto that i posted in my previous video and uh, i'm gonna build a hyper drive docking ring for those star wars fans out there hyper di hyper drive docking ring is basically a, 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 a ring or structure around a vehicle which would allow that vehicle to, to i guess drive it hyper and drive in hyperspace for lack of a better understanding of the science fiction science of that <laughs> So the, the, I guess the idea being the vehicle itself isn't suited for hyperspace, doesn't have the engines or the fuel or whatever it would need. So it would require uh, those, those parts and uh, technologies would be in the hyper ring itself. So the, I thought the SSTO concept really fit this well. So the SSTO is great for getting to and from the surface, but getting from one planet or moon to another is a different, a different animal. It, would be better suited for a, a, a vacuum rated engine, which the SSTO does not really have. The Rapier is uh, it's a hybrid engine, so it's not great at uh, either uh, vacuum or atmosphere. It's uh, uh, not, not gonna get me like, for instance, to Duna or the Mun quite as efficiently. So there you see me playing with some symmetry, trying to figure out where the, the actual vehicle's gonna dock. There's a neat trick you can use where you, uh, you know, the game only lets you, you get up to, uh, shoot, what is it, less, uh, like 12 uh, points of symmetry or eight or something. I forget, it's not very high, but um, there's ways that you could um, put symmetry on one port and then take that base port and um, use it symmetrically and it basically multiplies and you, you end up with lots and lots of ports if you, if you want. So that's what I'm using for my ring construction. So that all of those plates that you see making up the ring, they're all technically attached to uh, a central port. So they're they're floating out in space visually, but the game considers them structurally attached to the core of the station, which is nice. And then I'm going to use these struts to, um, to attach those plates to the engines and fuel tanks on the outside of the ring. So that piece you see in the center is about where the, the decoupler... I'm sorry, the uh, docking port should be for the, the ship to sit pretty much center with the ring. And um, now I'm just trying to, to connect the outer port of the ring visually to the center port of the ring. And uh, I'm also, you know, in the back of my mind, very concerned about mass, the center of the mass being um, where it should be because the uh, my vehicle, my, my SSTU needs to sit square in the middle of the ring so that its mass can contribute to the total mass uh, and, and put it in the center so uh, what I what I didn't do was uh, make the, the structure in the middle that's going to connect the vehicle to the outer part of the ring I didn't make it uh, symmetrical top and bottom I just made it symmetrical left and right so um, had I done that then the mass probably would have centered itself a little better um, so it's not a, not a perfect design, which you'll you'll see later in the video. But um, I think it looks looks pretty good, and uh, it, it does the trick. I mean, it technically will function. I think like this. So there you see, I'm just playing with some air intakes and some nose cones just to you know to get the smooth curves to get it to look like they're all um, connected. And um, now I'm starting to work out how I'm going to connect the the actual um, docking port section and the and the front of the ship you know i want it to look like the front of the ship's kind of um i guess being held in place and then the actual docking port is where the ship is uh, going to connect and then i can take the whole tube assembly and then make it um and duplicate it so now i'm just kind of making making sure everything's not going to move too much on me I'm starting to add some struts the further you get away from the, the center of the, uh, the assembly, the more things tend to wobble and flex, so struts can be your friend. And now um, I'm putting the engines back where they should be, fixing some struts, and we're getting pretty close. Starting to definitely shape up now, it looks like a hyper ring should look. 
So you see those two nuclear engines, that's going to provide the efficient uh, thrust that I want to move this SSTO. So when I, when I launch this ring, I'm not going to launch it with uh, an SSTO in it, obviously. I'm just going to launch the ring assembly by itself. And I think I just put a... Um, I keep forgetting docking port. I want to say decoupler. It's on the front of my, front of my tongue, docking port. Um, put, I'm going to put a docking port on the front of this whole assembly so I can dock the ring to uh, a space station, which would be another uh, destination for an SSTO if I want to take this... SSTO to Duna and dock with the um, Duna space station, I can. I can leave the ring parked there and refuel the ring and uh, send the SSTO down to the surface. The SSTO uh, will not get its fuel from the ring. You know, the ring is just to get it from one point in space to another. So I've got to make sure I add some solar panels and things to the ring itself so that it can provide its own power and it's basically its own craft. Um, but again, the center of mass isn't going to be right where it needs to be unless the uh, SSTO is in there. So that's that's a flaw in this design for sure. But uh, yeah, just kind of working. Now you see I've gotten rid of the SSTO because I'm not going to move my uh, docking port anymore. I pretty much know where the SSTO is going to sit. So I'm just making sure my ring looks nice. Now it's time to figure out how I'm going to put this thing in orbit. Hopefully it's not too floppy and flimsy. So I'm going to try to fit all this in a fairing so that I'm not worried about... Uh, the aerodynamics. I also realized, man, I forgot to put something to help maintain um, contact. So I added some antenna. Antennas. And yeah, put some, put a few struts. Add some, some things to help me get up into orbit. I've seen in some other KSP videos that folks like to put probe cores on their lower stages and parachutes and bring everything back to Kerbin. So I thought I might try it this time. I believe this was done in a sandbox mode. This wasn't uh, in my career mode. I'm sorry, it was in my career mode. Look, the fun's down at the corner. It's also why the loading screen tends to take longer. So if I thought about it, I would have cut that out before I started adding audio. But there we go. Typical uh, ascent. I'm going to go ahead and show it in what looks like four times speed. Just see if I can work out any wobbling. No, no, yeah, I'm going to revert. When you have a big awkward payload and your mass isn't perfectly center, that can be an issue. So sometimes the solution to that is just to go straight up or go at a very, very slight incline. Ordinarily, you want to have a nice healthy incline and um, be pitched to about 45 degrees when you're to the 20,000, 30,000 mark. But uh, when, the, when the ship's not so uh, steady, sometimes I'll, I'll take a much shallower Ascent. Looks like this is gonna this is gonna work out. Yep, I'm already up. Apoapsis is nice and high. So got my nice strong rhino engine. Gonna circularize with this. Open up that fairing. And I don't at this point don't really know how wobbly or how uh, off center that mass is going to be, but. Uh, I'm going to use a little bit of my Rhino fuel to correct my really, really terrible inclination. Again, I was just trying to get this thing into space. And here you see I'm, I'm, I'm starting to realize oof, the mass is not, not centered. So when I fire my engines, it's going to want to pitch the whole vehicle. So here's an SSTO that I'd put up. It's not the one that I've done, in, in obviously, that I, that I uh, launched in my previous video. This has got a different pilot, and it's still in orbit as opposed to the one that I launched and landed. So I'm trying to dock for the first time. Works. So I'm going to shut off my rapier engine, and that's a nice view. I'm going to use my nuclear engines, hopefully, to uh, to get this craft to the MUN. I'm not going to go very far with it, just a little test run. So let's go to the MUN and um, let me do something, and then come back to Kerbin. That's the that's the test if I can go to and from um, a different celestial body. So. I've got the thrust cranked down on the nuclear engines so that the um, the SAS can kind of help balance the whole ship because the engines are trying to pitch me and the SAS going to counteract that and, and keep me centered. If I increase the thrust to 100%, I'd, I'd, I'd go off course and the engines would be a little, little too powerful, which is never the case with these nuclear engines. They're never too powerful, but apparently they are for my poor design. I think I also set it so that the fuel tanks in the middle 
of the craft empty first so that they stop offsetting the mass. But uh, didn't maybe didn't help too much. So I'm at the right approach for the MUN. Now you see the MUN captures me and its gravity. Circularize now. Relatively long burn for such a small craft. But again, it's my thrust is cranked all the way down. But boop. So that's pretty much a success. I mean, it got me from one place to another without having to use any of my uh, fuel in my SSTU. So now I think I'll I'll dock this whole assembly with the space station that I've got around the MUN. I'm going to borrow some fuel for both the nuclear engines and the, the rapier engine. And uh, I'll leave the ring docked while I take a trip down to the MUN. Because what's the point of coming to the MUN with an SSTU if you're not going to use it to go down to the surface? Now, obviously, I'm not going to use the air breathing feature of the rapier because there's no air around the MUN. But uh, I'll use it when I get back to Kerbin, I'm sure. So, got lots of RCS, got my docking port on the front. Go ahead and plug into the, the station I've got floating around the MUN, borrow some fuel. Definitely want to fill up my nuclear engines. Can't forget about my liquid fuel engines and uh, oxidizer for my my SSTO. I've said this in previous videos. Man, it is tedious transferring fuel in KSP. I hope that's something that they're going to take a look at and address in KSP2. So. This, is, this is the segment where I need some, some elevator music. I was trying to figure out a good use for SSTOs in my career mode at this point. Why well, I built the hyper ring, um, just kind of piddling with it and thinking it, it could possibly work. Obviously, not that sort of hyper ring. I've got way more parts and mass than I would need. This is definitely more for for fun and for for video's sake. But um, I think the consensus is SSTOs are just for players that enjoy the challenge and and the fun of it. They're not efficient. They're not um, not a great choice in career mode most of the time. I mean, yeah, they are efficient in cost, but when you when you've got millions of credits, it's not it's not that uh, big of a deal. So there you see me landing a plane on the moon, and uh, go ahead and plant my obligatory flag. I usually type just a bunch of gibberish because I'm gonna take the flag down anyway. And let me point in the direction that I want to be facing. Turn my RCS back on so I can orient myself and boop off the surface. Go little low periapsis because I'm, I'm going to circularize below the uh, the station so that I can catch up to it wherever it's at and uh, do a little time warping see if I can get a maneuver set up an encounter go back and get my hyper ring so I can go back to Kerbin there's my glorious station Got a dock with the ring I don't think I'll uh, borrow any more fuel for the SSTO. It's got plenty to land at Kerbin, and the hyper ring's already fueled up. So I could have released the hyper ring and done all this separately, but I left it docked just because. Nice and slow. Oh, and I had a little more trouble, I think, on this docking attempt than I did when the, the ring was out by itself. So I'm gonna back off and come in and try a different approach. So I think for the first time I was using the uh, the docking port itself as the control point for the vessel and then I changed it back to the cockpit. So it's easier to, uh, that's also why I have a ring assembly in the front. That's something, that gives me something to target. So I can target the front docking port of the ring assembly with my SSTU and try to line it up that way as opposed to lining up the, the, the Docking port on the top of the SSTO, the one that's actually being used. If that made any sense, hopefully. So I got my ring to detach from the Mun station, and time to go back to Kerbin. Got me a decent little encounter set up. So I can get my periapsis down. I say about a hundred thousand meters. That'll work. I'll go ahead and time warp. Put my whole ring assembly back in orbit of Kerbin, and just leave it parked there. And I guess yeah, while, while my Orbit still nice and high. I can I can adjust my inclination. It'll be a little more efficient than adjusting it with a, a lower orbit. So now I'm going to go ahead and circularize. Leave my ring parked here. 
technically the most efficient thing to do could have would have been to release the SSTO once I'd gotten to this point. The SSTO could have entered the atmosphere and done an air break to really burn off all that uh, velocity. And then the, the ring assembly would have used a lot less fuel, but I decided just to leave it all together. Do it in a couple different burns. Again, I got my thrust cranked down, so I'll just leave the ring parked here. And see if I can get this SSTO back to the surface, which I didn't do such a great job of on the previous video. I mean, that was a fun shot. I detached the SSTO and shot through the ring. I think that's something they did in the Star Wars episode something. What are the... Maybe episode one? I forget which one they had. That type of... Uh, must have been episode two. Anyway. Coming in, trying to approach the KSC. Did a little burn to uh, adjust my trajectory and see if I can get close. And I think at this point I decided, no, I'm not going to go for the KSC because I did it in a previous video. Let's go for the Island Air Base, just for funsies. And... Uh, Time warp, coming in, coming in. Will I break up on contact with the ground? That is the question. Well, we're about to find out. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I definitely enjoyed making the video. I enjoyed making flying the ring and flying my SSDO again. If you like the video, hit the like button. If you haven't subscribed already, please do that. And uh, appreciate you for tuning in. Hope to see you again soon. Thanks.